Should you charge a flat fee for your service or a fee that depends on the amount of hours worked, the amount of materials used, and so on? That's what we're going to look into in this video. So when it comes to having a cell phone service, most consumers prefer a flat fee than a pay per use service. Even though studies have shown that only 24% of the people that switch from a pay per service situation to a flat fee actually saved. So why do people prefer that flat fee? Well, for one, it's you're dealing with something that is known ahead of time. They could put some money aside and you know what to expect versus an unknown situation. So let's say in the known situation, you know that every month you have to pay $50. And in the unknown situation, some months you might only have to pay 30, but maybe some months, if you didn't really look at what you're doing, you'll have to pay $200. And this variation, people do not really enjoy this. So even though it may be beneficial for them on the long run to have this variable rate service, a lot of people prefer that flat fee. There's the concept of knowing what to expect, not having that mental cloud of thinking about, well, am I overusing it? Should I limit my usage and so on? People like to feel that they can do pretty much what they want with the service. I personally, with my cell phone service, I'm kind of happy that no matter how much I use it, I know I have a certain price and I don't have to pay more. Is it the best decision? Maybe not, but that's just the way that I set it up. There's other examples of this as well. And examples I could think about is going to get food at a bulk food store or a store that has a bulk food section. I remember in the past, there was this time that I went to this bulk food store and I was getting a bunch of different things and I kind of got mixed nuts as well, and I filled up my bag to a certain amount, pretty big bag, but I was really shocked and surprised when I got to the cash register because that bag, which wasn't that big, actually cost me like $50. So uh, at that moment, I was thinking like, oh, I almost feel like bringing it back because it's pay I'm paying way more than I expected, and I'm not really sure I, I see $50 of value in this bag right now. But I was at the cash register, and I just kind of paid it and I made with my day. But the thing is, is that that kind of turned me off to buying more bulk food. And my advice would be in the future, if anyone wants to kind of take this advice and do something with it, I think the way to go in the future, if we want to minimize waste, we want to become more of a circular economy, there's a lot of it that's going to revolve about using something and reusing that same packaging for future products. And that's where a bulk food store is good, is that you could kind of walk in with your own packages, fill it up and then use and then come back and it just leads to a lot less waste. Does it ever happen to you that you go to a grocery store and you see like you're tempted by some olives and you see all of the bulk olives out there and you're kind of looking at them, trying to decide which one you want and so on, but you're not sure how much they actually cost because they're paid per gram and you're not sure how much it's gonna weigh and then you see the package that's already pre-packaged on the side and you choose that because you see this is gonna be five dollars i have no idea how much this little plastic container of those olives will cost me but this one i know well that is a situation where you favor the flat rate the known rate to the unknown variable rate depending on the amount of weight of your package the thing that I despise, and I'm sure many other people as well, is not knowing uh, how much things are gonna cost when you're filling it up. You might kind of fill up, fill up, oh, I need, I'll have a bit more of this. And then you realize that the cash register that the price was a lot higher. Of course, you could weigh in everything else, uh, but it requires calculation, requires time, and you still put it in your pail. So it takes uh, a little bit more effort, and most people are lazy on that front. So what could be a solution? Well, think about it. There's many other solutions out there, but I'll offer you one right now. Well, why not have a bulk food store that around the different segments of the bulk food, you have like this mason jar that has the food in question already in it. And the price that you charge for is dependent on the weight. 
and that you have this kind of consignment service with regards to the mason jars. So if people kind of take out five mason jars, there's a certain fee, but if they come back next time and they bring five more mason jars and they take five other things, well, it kind of cancels out. And then you'd have to organize kind of the cleaning of those mason jars, make sure everything's always sterile and clean, but it can make things a lot more clear so people have more of an idea of this is a flat rate that they're paying for. This is a $5 jar of nuts versus a $10 one. That's a larger one. And it makes it also quicker for them to make that purchase. Uh, so you have to kind of balance that out. And uh, hopefully someone could kind of adopt this because I'd really like to see the service for my own consumption. I love the idea of kind of like zero waste stores. What I don't like is how long it takes and how uncertain I am of the prices. So it makes it harder for me to judge how much does this product cost versus that one over there? Because I could see the price per weight, but I don't really know what the relative weight is for the same kind of size and so on and so forth. So it makes it a lot easier for me to evaluate and I think it would be a much better service. Link to this as well of this idea of flat fee versus a pay per use fee will be a video about the pain of paying. Why is there's this concept of pain of paying that applies to the flat rate bias? Well, if you think about the cell phone service that you're paying for it, paying a certain monthly fee and you have access to as much internet as you need and as much, as much calls as you need versus one that you're paying for every data download, every phone call that you make, every text message that you send, and so on. Well, in that situation there, you're going to be thinking about how much it costs every time you use it. So seeing that is going to have an influence on your behavior and it's going to have a negative influence on your satisfaction as you're making that call. Because as you're making that call, you're not just thinking, hey, I'm talking to a friend, it's been a long time, I'm happy to speak to them. You're kind of seeing the amount of money that's going to cost you throughout the process so you might not talk as much and so on but that's going to be covered in a video called the pain of paying which goes much more elaborate on that so the idea here if you're going to offer a service a lot of customers prefer a flat rate i would say that there are exceptions though i dealt with a lot of construction workers when i was building my house and i did most of the things myself because I just feel that a lot of people overcharge and a lot of people want to just charge flat fee. And I prefer a fee per hour because I know exactly how much I'm paying. And the flat fee is preferred for some customers because they know, okay, this is going to cost me this much for this deck. But at the same time, I feel that you're often overpaying with that flat fee because those businesses have to kind of pay themselves some form of insurance premium in the process because they don't want to lose out. You don't want to offer a service of building someone's deck and end up with less money that after you've paid all your employees, you're losing, you're barely making any money. You want to make money. So you establish that it's going to count, uh, take 50 hours to make and uh, every man hour is like $100 an hour and there's like uh, 5,000 of materials. So 5,000 of time, 5,000 material, I'll charge 10,000, but actually I'll charge a little bit more just to make sure. And that's often the situation. And in the end, when you take those fixed fee services and you kind of break it down, you calculate how much it costs the material, you're realizing that you're paying a lot more than the hourly fee of these workers. So I personally prefer that kind of pay as you go situation in those situations because I feel that they're overcharging. But that doesn't apply with the food example. The food example that we had earlier was it's the same price. It's just one of them you don't know ahead of time what the price is and the other one you would so there it's just a kind of like known versus unknown there's no kind of concept of insurance premium in that situation there so think about different examples where the flat rate bias may come to your advantage where customers would favor it and how you as a business could incorporate it and uh, think about it and we'll talk more about it in class if you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing or joining my class where I guide you to apply and expand on the information found in these videos to real life examples. Have a good day.